Up. <laughs> Welcome, Ed. <laughs> Let me go check out the batteries.
than hand.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Daniel died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him in his eternal glory.
Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your son, who died on the cross, was also raised from the dead and has become for us the first fruits for all who have fallen asleep. Today we ask that you might grant that Daniel, through this great mystery, who has gone to his own rest in Christ, may share in the joy of the resurrection which awaits us all through our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Julia is going to offer our first reading today, and I'd ask the rest of us to please be seated. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for everything under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from his toil? I have considered the task that God has appointed for the sons of men to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timeless into their hearts without man's ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your staff, my comfort. 
a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown for men and an unsullified life, the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the whirl of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become, having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he sped him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw it and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, those whom you gave me are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. 
You know, I'm going to first of all take this opportunity to thank all of you for your presence here today to pray for Danny, to support his family, and certainly to support everyone who is called to pray for him today. You know, your presence here today, it's, it's amazing and it's abundant in its grace. Your mere presence here today is such a gift to the Repepi family. I can't help but echo what I'm sure they want to say to you if they have not already. Thank you for your, your presence here today. You know, if you've ever had to say goodbye to somebody you love, you know that when people gathered to help you in that farewell, you know how important that was to you. So that's how important your presence here is today to the entire Repepi family. I want to also thank my brother priests who are here can celebrating this Mass. Many of you, of course, know Dan and the Repepi family, so your presence here today I appreciate and I very much thank as well. I want to thank Father Suso, who is seated behind me, the pastor here at St. Columkill, who's given me the honor of celebrating Dan's funeral liturgy, and Father Neil O'Connor, who is among us over here. He's the pastor emeritus, the retired pastor from St. Columkill. I thank him for his presence here today. And also Father John Singler, who is one of the main celebrants here, who is a good friend of the Repepi family. I want to thank all of you for your presence here today. If I forgot anyone, of course, I apologize. You know, any time that there's a sudden death, not only a priest, but all of us, we search for words to say. What can you say at a time like this? And I was given some advice a long time ago. Say very little, but talk of God. Don't talk of what happened, but talk of what is about to happen. You know, we're living in a very strange world today. Civil unrest, political tension. We're seeing so much despair in our streets. Every time we gather at a funeral liturgy like this, I think this is what we should think of. As a matter of fact, I know what we should be thinking of, and that's the victory of Christ. You know, there's two words that we need to remind ourselves when the going gets tough, and those two words are God wins. God wins. So no matter what has happened to Dan, no matter what might happen to us in our future, please remember, please remember, God wins. There's greatness ahead for all of us. And there's joy waiting for all of us to experience. So don't forget those two words. If anything, if I can't come up with words to explain what happened, I hope these two words explains what is about to happen. God wins. You know, I have a few things I want to share as I pray for Danny and his family. And... The first begins with a letter that Steve, Ed, and Anthony got from Mayor Jackson and also Carrie D. Howard and Chief Calvin Williams upon Danny's death. And they asked me to share this with you here today. And they write, We are saddened to hear of the sudden passing of Daniel C. Repepi on September 24th of this year. Daniel and his family have been long-standing partners of the city of Cleveland, especially our safety forces. We see a few among us here today. The A. Repepi and Sons Funeral Home is well-respected in northeastern Ohio as a business which has served countless residents in their time of grief with compassion and kindness. The A. Repepi and Sons Funeral Home most recently accommodated officers from around the country to honor the fallen Cleveland Police Detective James Skernovitz, and we thank you for all that you did for him and his family. Daniel was instrumental also in gifting our Cleveland police canines with ballistic vests, along with the rest of the Repepi family. We offer our deepest sympathy to Daniel's wife, Kristen, their children, the Repepi family, and all who knew and loved Daniel. You know, we were in the church, and we didn't see this, but I was watching through the window, and there was a litany of police officers and their canine dogs lining 
the driveway as Daniel came in. What a tribute that was to him and the Repepi family. I was, as I saw that, very honored and blessed to see that. You know, in that second reading we just heard, though he was a just man, he certainly died early. And I think that really describes what we're acknowledging here today. 62 years of life doesn't seem like enough, does it? A just man who died too much early. And we can say Danny was a just man because all you have to do is look around this church. How many people are here today as a tribute to the kind of man he was? He would do anything for anyone. He would be a friend to anyone in need. He would and was always a beloved father, a stepfather, and a grandfather in the waiting. I was told he was anticipating that with great joy. So Kristen, we certainly pray for you. We pray for all who are gathered here today as members of the Repepi family, Steve and Anthony, Eddie and Anita, and your spouses. We're so sorry for your loss. We pray certainly for all of the children of Danny, Julia, Marissa, Nick, and his stepchildren, Billy, Brittany, and Ashley. We're here to support you as well. So please let us pray for you and please receive our prayers with all the sincerity that we offer now. You know, there are countless things that we can do to describe the kind of person Danny was. I recently came across a story that involved a few brothers and it reminded me of a few brothers that I know who really cared for one another. And this story goes like this. When the world was young, there were two brothers. They shared a field and a mill. Each night they divided evenly the grain that they had ground together during that day. Now, as it happened, one of the brothers lived alone, all by himself, no family. The other brother had a wife and a large family. One day the single brother thought, you know, it isn't fair that we divide this grain evenly. I have only myself to care for, but my brother, he has children and a wife. He needs more than me. So each night he secretly took some of his grain to his brother's granary to make sure that his brother was never in need. But the married brother, who had a large family, thought to himself, it isn't really fair that we divide this grain evenly because I have children who are going to provide for me in my old age. So every night he secretly took some of his grain to his brother's granary. As a result, both of them always found that they had more than enough. They had a great supply of grain, and somehow, mysteriously, they were always full. Then one night, the brothers met each other halfway between the two houses. Suddenly, they realized what had been happening and they embraced each other in love. The story here is that embrace. Where that embrace happens, that is where God is present. That is where God wins. Where that embrace happens among people who love each other, that's the presence of what we're celebrating here today, the presence of God's love. A holy place where only we know its existence, where we love another person. That's a holy place. And that's what this story is about. Where God is made known, we call that a holy place. And I would gather that anytime the Repepi brothers embraced in serving other people, they were in the midst, the middle of a holy place. And Danny played a big role in that so often. And the nice thing about this story as I first came across it, I thought, you know what, Dan could have been either one of those brothers. He could have been the one with the large family who thought of his single brother, or he could have been the brother who wasn't married who was thinking of his older brother. And that's the kind of person he was, always thinking of others, always very, very considerate of the needs of others. And that is the only thing that we're called to do in this lifetime. 
think of another person before we think of ourselves. And when I think of Danny, that's what I think of. A person who thought of others before he ever considered thinking of himself, whether it was his wife, Kristen, his family, his children, a family that came into the funeral home because they were sad because someone they had loved had just died. He automatically stopped thinking of what he needed to do and started thinking about what he needed to do for you. And that's the kind of person he was. That's the kind of person I know in my relationship with Dan. You know, from the many priests who are here and from the countless priests who know the Repepi family, I have to say I am very humbled that I was asked to celebrate this funeral mass here today. Any one of us could be up here praying for Dan. But I was asked, and I'm truly humbled by the invitation to do what I'm doing right now, to remember not a funeral director, but someone who became and was and is a friend of mine. You know, he did little subtle things that reminded me that he was a person for others. You know, I see many of you right in front of me with that little Secret Service flag on your lapel, many of you gentlemen. And he has a very good friend named Mark who provides those things for these gentlemen. And one day I was at the funeral home, and this might not sound like much, but it's a kind of like he'd give you the shirt off your back kind of moment. And I says, hey, Dan, I really love that flag. I go, can you get me one? And you know what he did? He took it off his lapel, and he just gave it to me. It sounds like a very simple story, but that's what he did. He goes, ah, I'll get another one. And he did. But he says, yeah, I can get you one. Take mine. And while I'm talking about Mark, a good friend of his who's right here with us, I remember what he did for the Sedlak family. Mark's sister Maureen died within the last year and was buried from this church. And I was here for some time, almost three years, and I got to know their family and I had moved away and was not here at the time she died. But I do know that when I was here, Dan would call me and say, you know, Maureen is very sick, and Mark is in from Washington, and they'd really love it if you could go down and visit them, anoint Maureen, and just be with the family. And that wasn't him trying to pull strings and get a priest to do something for him. That was him being kind to his friend. He knew how much the Sedlak family would appreciate my being there because they're a very devout and holy family, and he knew that if a priest would visit them, anoint them, and be with them, that would bring them comfort. And so he went out of his way to track me down to see if I could go and be of service to that family. And I was honored again to be there that day. And then, about a year later, Maureen finally succumbed to cancer, and she died, and I wasn't here for her funeral mass, but she was buried at a later date, and Dan made arrangements to make sure that I was there at the cemetery to offer those funeral burial services. And I remember that day as well. And as I remember that day, I always remember that that's a blessed moment for a priest. But you know what? Without Daniel Repepi's efforts in making that happen, I would have never been there in those moments. I would not have had the opportunity to do something myself for someone else. But you know who allowed me to do that? It was Dan. It was his desire to think of his friend and his family and to do what he could to make sure that I could be there to be of service to them. And he was always off in the distance, in the background, while these things were happening, never trying to experience any limelight, never trying to say, I'm going to get some points for doing this when it comes my time to meet God. No, he just did it because he loved his friends and he wanted to make sure that they were taken care of. He knew that my presence as a priest, not my presence as Chris Weber, but my priesthood would be of great comfort and service to them. You know, that first reading we just heard today from Ecclesiastes is a very common one that we hear at funeral liturgies. And what I like to do when I hear this reading is to comment on the word time. Because I truly believe, and I think we all believe, that time is something that God gives to each of us as a gift. And the best thing that we can do with a gift that's given to us, quite honestly, is to give that gift away to someone else. 
And so, that's what Dan did. God gave him the gift of time. We wish the time were longer, of course. But what did Dan do with the gift of time that God gave to him? He never hoarded it. He never kept it for himself. He gave that gift away to all of you, whether it was as a brother, a brother-in-law, a father, a husband, or a friend. He gave that gift of time that God gave to him to his family and friends. And if you doubt that, all you have to do is look around at this church and see how many of you are here. It means he touched your life in some way. It means he probably gave a bit of his time to all of you. And thank goodness that you're here today because you're doing the same thing now for him. You're giving your time to him and his family. And that's how this world works. Us doing things for each other not battling with each other, not arguing with each other to no end, not being angry or hateful towards each other, but loving each other, taking care of each other, reaching out to each other in need. So does God win? Yes, God wins. And we call that win eternal life. And that's why we're here today, my friends, to not only console a sad family, but to pray with great confidence that all who have died and gone before us have the opportunity to experience the joy of what we believe in. We believe that God wins. Let's never forget that. And as I mentioned when I began, I didn't want to put into words what happened, but I can say with just two words what's about to happen for Daniel Repepi. God's going to win for him today. Let us stand as Steve offers our prayers of petition. Steve is one of Dan's many nephews. <clears throat> the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Danny, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who received the body of Christ, <laughs> the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Danny, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hearts Danny touched and the lives he influenced throughout his journey. May his memory live on through each and every one of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may welcome into his glory those of our family and friends who have departed this life, especially my grandparents, Anthony and Ann Repepi, as well as Kristen's mother, Sharon Carroll. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a moment, let us now be with our own memories of Danny. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we call out to you now in our need. We ask you to hear us, make our faith strong this day, and all that we witness, experience, and celebrate today. We do all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
So together we now pray that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord God, we celebrate your love for us today. We celebrate this opportunity to acknowledge the grace of your Son, which is reflected in the resurrection of the dead. In his name, as he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is always and everywhere within our duty to give you thanks, O Lord. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. In him, the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality, which is yet to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, the eternal dwelling is now made ready for them in heaven. So with the angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we now acclaim. invite you to please kneel. If it is easier for you to sit, please do that as well. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things. You make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit to graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you now for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread and giving thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, Jesus took the chalice again, giving thanks. He said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with his Holy Spirit. May we become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Today we ask that you remember your servant Daniel, whom you have called today from this world to be with you. Grant that he who was united with your son in his death may also now be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will rise in the flesh, those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through our Lord Jesus, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With great faith and great confidence, we now pray as Jesus, our Savior, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will as you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
You gonna go down there? Just go down. Ah, uh, no. Okay. Too late. Yeah. We'll see. I'd like to give some brief directions about the offering of communion here today. They will be, so we can practice some social distancing, just three places where communion will be distributed. One at my far left, one at my far right, and then I will be in the middle and we'll alternate coming down. So if we can take our time receiving communion here today, it might take a while, of course, but uh, we have some beautiful music to listen to and it will give us an opportunity to pray, or rather to pray, excuse me. For those in the first two pews, just stay where you are and I'll bring communion to you because of the, uh, the crowding in the aisle. If we ever doubt that God wins, let's not doubt that ever again because of what we witness right here. Jesus in this Eucharist. It's a sign of his victory. It's a joy that we celebrate today, even in a time of sadness. For this is our salvation. This is Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say thy word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, we ask that you receive your faithful departed in kindness. May the grace that we have received and shared in today carry us back to heaven. May it serve as a pathway, the nourishment and the strength that Danny needs today to meet you because of your love for him. May he rest with you in eternal life, along with your son Jesus, who is Lord, along with the Holy Spirit, as together you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone, please be seated for one more time. And Anthony is going to share a few words and thank all of you for your presence here today. So, Anthony. I thought the hardest thing in my life would be when we buried our parents. But I was wrong. Before I begin, I want to thank Father. I want to thank all the clergy right here. Your friendship to all of my family has been... There's no words to explain it, I guess I could say. Any of you could be up here celebrating the Mass with us because you're all so close to us and mean so much to us. And we thank you. And I also want to thank all of you. You know, what we do for a living and for a profession is help people get through the hardest times in their lives. And we take that as something that's very sacred to us. And we think about it, and we think, okay, our job is done and we move on. But I have to tell you all, the outpouring of support has been unmeasurable. And I thank all of you for your love your prayers. On September 24th of 2020, heaven gained another angel. So many have asked the question, including ourselves, why he died so early in life? Why did this have to happen? And there's no answer here today. There's nothing we can say to understand how it is. It's God's will, as Father said. However, the question we should be asking is why he lived. And Danny lived his life to spread kindness to others, to love life, and to give time to those around him. We heard everything and every day the words of praise and gratitudes. But Danny had several favorite things in his life. Family was number one. He sacrificed everything for his wife and his children and never gave up. It was his love for them that kept him going. And he knew it. And it was his duty to be there for them every day and every part of their lives. His friends followed right behind. Support for them, favors, helping anyone who needed it. I mean, Danny didn't know the word, no, I couldn't help you. In fact, he promised so many things that I had to make it good, it drove me crazy. <laughs> He'd come to me and say, we gotta do this. And I said, we gotta do what? 
and we make it work. If you knew Danny, you knew he loved cars. And if you thought about purchasing a new car, don't go to him. <laughs> because you couldn't make the decision. He'd give you 17 different options. I can promise you this. When he met the good Lord above, he looked at him and said, why are you driving that old piece of junk? You need a new car. <laughs> and so right now, God's looking around at about 17 different dealerships and deciding which he's going to have. <laughs> we all receive gifts from God in one form or another. And there's words to describe people. And I think if you think about the theory of relativity, for every reaction there's an equal and opposite reaction. And, and the words I'm going to use for Danny today have two perps. The one we understand and the one we didn't see was kindness was his first one, which is God's equivalent to patience, was generosity, which is God's equivalent to selfishness. It was a wonderful smile, which is God's equivalent to love. But the greatest gift that Danny had, and we looked at it in this respect, and if you know Danny, I will tell you this. He'll tell you one thing, and then three minutes later he'll repeat it again because he forgot about it. It's called forgetfulness. But you know what? It's not forgetfulness. Because forgetfulness is God's equivalent to forgiveness. And that's what Danny did. He didn't forget. He forgave. And he moved on. You know, in the back of Danny's memory card, the prayer was called, When Tomorrow Starts Without Me. And there's a section that says, An angel came and called his name and took him by the hand and said his place in heaven was ready far above and that he'd have to leave behind all those he dearly loved. And when that angel came, it didn't come by himself because two angels came. Because when God said, I'm bringing Danny home, I can promise you that my mom and my dad, our mother and our father, stepped up and said, wait a minute. If you're going to bring him home, we're going to be there. And it's going to be swift, and it's going to be painless. And we're going to hold his head, and we're going to bring him to you. And I can promise you, ladies and gentlemen, that that's what happened. He went swiftly and without pain. And he's now in the arms of my brother and father. So remember, on September 24th of 2020, we gave Danny up to God. And we know that he touched so many that his spirit will live on in each one of us and for each one of us in the memories we have. Because a beautiful life came to an end, and he died as he lived, everyone's friend. May the Lord keep him in his palm of his hands, and I thank you.
before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. For one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Daniel in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life, for they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward us, listen to our prayers, and open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mo 
Strike, you turn me for a